When managing both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, we work really hard to bring elevated blood sugar levels back down to normal. Changes to the diet, exercise, and all sorts of different types of medication, including insulin, are geared toward taking high glucose levels and making them lower. But sometimes those medications do too good a job and drop the glucose levels below normal. What's up guys, I'm PA David and I'm a board certified and licensed diabetes specialty PA practicing in Southern California. And as always, Sugar High is your channel for relatable and reliable diabetes information that's always easy to understand. If you're new to this channel, I hope that you'll enjoy the format and find the information super helpful and maybe that you'll even consider subscribing. In today's Sugar High video, we're talking all about the most common immediate risk of diabetes, hypoglycemia. This is a topic that is important to anyone managing diabetes, so let's get into it on this video on Sugar High. So if we're going to have a good understanding of hypoglycemia, we kind of need to start off by talking about what it actually is. The term hypoglycemia is just a fancy way of saying low blood sugar. The medical term hypo means below or deficient, glyco refers to glucose, and emia sort of means in the blood. Glucose levels normally fluctuate all throughout the day and they can vary depending on whether you've recently eaten or not. But for most people, normal is considered to be anywhere between 70 and 100 milligram per deciliter if you're fasting and less than 140 within two hours after a meal. Now those numbers are in the range of how we report glucose levels here in the United States and a few other countries as well. But most countries actually report glucose in millimoles per liter. So I'll list those values here on the screen as well, since I know that many of you watch from all over the world. Either way, anything less than 70 milligram per deciliter or 3.9 millimole per liter is considered abnormally low. So you might be wondering what the big deal is if the blood sugar gets a little low for a short period of time. We know that high blood glucose can cause damage to all sorts of organs like the kidneys and the eyes and the heart, but does it really cause harm if it's temporarily low? Well, glucose is your body's main energy source. It's how every muscle in your body gets the energy to move and how every cell stays alive. And it's the only fuel that your brain can function on. Your brain cannot run on fat or protein. So if you run out of glucose, it's kind of like your car running out of gas. It can lead to some major safety concerns and in some people can even increase the risk of cardiovascular events like heart attack or stroke. The most common cause of hypoglycemia is from the effect of medications. The entire job of diabetes medication is to reduce the amount of blood sugar and if a medication drops it too low, hypoglycemia is the result. Technically, any diabetes medication can cause hypoglycemia, but fortunately, most of the newer medications that we use for type 2 diabetes don't really do this very often. But the two most common groups of medications that do cause hypoglycemia are insulin and sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas are older type 2 diabetes medications like glipizide, gliburide, and glimepiride. And if those names sound familiar and you want to know more about that medication, I have a whole video that covers them in detail and you can click on this link right here if you want to see that. But of the two, insulin is definitely the more likely to result in hypoglycemia, which is why in type 2 diabetes, we try to only use insulin if we absolutely have to. We're much more likely to start with medications that reduce glucose well but don't cause a lot of hypoglycemia and then save insulin for later in the times when those medications either can't be used or if they're not as effective anymore. But insulin is required in type 1 diabetes so you can see why hypoglycemia is an even greater issue and sort of a daily concern for people trying to manage type 1. In addition to the straight effects of medication, there's other circumstances that can increase the risk of hypoglycemia in everyday life too. Skipping meals can make hypoglycemia more possible because there's less energy going into the body. And in the same way, increased physical activity that raises the amount of energy being burned can lower the glucose levels too. Times of increased stress, whether that's emotional or mental or physical stress, can also raise the risk 
and illness or infection can do it too. So let's talk about the symptoms of hypoglycemia. When blood sugar drops too low, it does not feel good. And that's actually a good thing. It's our body's way of letting us know that something's wrong and giving us a reason to want to fix it before it gets seriously dangerous. Symptoms of hypoglycemia usually begin before the level gets critical. Most people will feel symptoms starting anywhere from the low 70s or the 60s, but we don't usually worry about hypoglycemia getting clinically dangerous until the levels drop to 54 milligram per deciliter or lower. It's sort of like feeling pain when you're touching something that's too hot. It feels painful and makes you want to put it down before your skin actually starts to burn. Now it's important to note that everyone is different in terms of what symptoms they experience with hypoglycemia and at what glucose level those symptoms happen. You can have any combination of the symptoms that we're gonna talk about and the glucose level that causes you to feel those symptoms one day can be different the next. Sometimes you might feel terrible with a minor drop like 68, but then other days you might feel only mild symptoms when your glucose is even lower than that. Some people's symptoms show up like clockwork and in others, it can be totally unpredictable. The symptoms that you feel are caused by a mix of the body releasing adrenaline and the effect that low blood sugar availability has on the brain. Adrenaline is the hormone that your body uses to prepare you to deal with an emergency or some kind of threatening situation. It's what causes you to feel that rush when you're suddenly frightened or even angry. Since the body recognizes that not having enough glucose is a possible emergency, it releases that adrenaline from the adrenal glands so that you know that something's going on and it's really important that you do something about it as quickly as possible. Because of this adrenaline release, hypoglycemia usually causes symptoms like feeling intense nervousness or trembling hands. You might get a rapid heartbeat or palpitations. Sometimes people get sweating or clamminess, or they might feel intense hunger, and sometimes the pupils will dilate as well. The other half of the symptoms of hypoglycemia come from your brain running out of glucose to function on. Remember, glucose is the only form of energy that your brain can use. So if glucose drops low, your brain has a hard time functioning normally. And this results in symptoms of feelings of dizziness or confusion. It can give lightheadedness. There may be changes to your vision like blurriness or flashes of light. You can even feel strange numbness or pins and needles in your hands, in your face, or even all over your body. Speech can be slowed down or slurred and you might have difficulty finding the right words. It can change your personality, causing you to suddenly feel really irritable or grumpy or emotionally fragile. Balance and coordination can be affected, which makes it difficult to walk or drive safely, kind of in a similar way to somebody who's drunk. And if glucose levels get low enough, the brain starts to totally shut down into power saving mode and a person can become unresponsive or unconscious. During severe episodes of hypoglycemia like this, people can also experience seizures and it can even result in a full coma. These moments where the glucose is so low that a person cannot treat him or herself and requires the help of others is the definition of severe hypoglycemia and this is considered to be a diabetic emergency. So let's talk about what to do in cases of both mild and severe hypoglycemia. So if you're a person living with diabetes, particularly somebody using insulin, it is really important that you and your family members have a good understanding of how to manage and treat episodes of hypoglycemia. Most of the time, hypoglycemic episodes are mild to moderate in severity and can be treated just by yourself right here in your kitchen. Since hypoglycemia is really just lacking blood sugar, putting sugar back into the system to the point that glucose levels return to normal is all it really takes to make it go away. If you're feeling the symptoms that we talked about earlier, the next step, if you safely can, is to check your blood sugar. It's a good idea to confirm your actual blood sugar level because we want to see if it really is indeed lower than 70 or 3.9 for my international friends. Sometimes if your glucose has been high for a long time, your body kind of forgets what it feels like to be normal. Let's say for example that your sugar has been over 300 for a long time and we give you a medication that brings you back down to the 100s. If your sugar comes down from 300 to 120, 
your body is gonna notice the difference and it may trigger some of those symptoms that we talked about earlier. But you're not actually hypoglycemic at 120 even though you may feel that way. This is called a false low and it's not really hypoglycemia and it can be managed differently than true hypoglycemia. Keep an eye out on my channel for a video on false lows because we're gonna talk specifically about this topic in a separate video. If you check your sugar and find that you are indeed less than 70, it should be treated whether you have symptoms or not. People who have hypoglycemia really frequently can sometimes lose the sensitivity to low blood sugars and don't always feel those symptoms. This is called hypoglycemia unawareness and we're gonna have a separate video on that too. But it's still hypoglycemia and still needs to be treated. The most commonly recommended way to treat hypoglycemia is by using something called the 15-15 rule. The idea is that you should eat or drink 15 grams of carbohydrates and then check your sugar again 15 minutes later. If your glucose hasn't come back up to normal yet, then take another 15 grams of carbs and check your sugar again in another 15 minutes. Keep doing that until you hit normal. So how do you know what 15 grams of carbohydrates is? Well, let me give you a few examples. 15 grams of carbs is about what you would get with like one slice of bread or maybe a medium-sized orange, or half of an apple, uh, half of a banana, or like 15 grapes. In fact, grapes are kind of cool because one grape has about one gram of carbohydrates, which makes it really easy to sort of count out how many grams of carbs you're getting. Now, all of these options work, but my personal recommendation when treating hypoglycemia would be to stick to the carbs that you can drink. All of these things have to break down and digest, and you don't wanna be waiting for that if you're trying to correct a hypoglycemia episode. 15 grams of carbs is also what you would get in like four ounces of fruit juice, like this orange juice, or even four ounces of regular soda, not diet or sugar-free soda. And keep in mind that four ounces is not that much. You don't need to guzzle the entire two liter bottle of soda. But if you don't have either one of these options available, Really, all you gotta do is get a glass of water and if you were to take one tablespoon of sugar and pour it into the glass of water and stir it up and drink it, that's almost 15 grams of carbs right there. That works and it's super simple. If you're out and about when hypoglycemia hits, there are several different types of travel carbs that you can carry with you. Just about any pharmacy will have glucose tablets like these ones, these are super cheap. These are like three and a half dollars and it comes in a canister of 50 of them. They make little 10 packs that are like a dollar each that'll fit really easy into your purse or your pocket or the glove box in your car. Take them anywhere you go. But keep in mind that these glucose tablets only have about four grams of carbohydrates each. So you would need to eat like four of them in order to get that 15 grams of carbs. But truthfully, you don't even really need to get this fancy if you don't want to. These hard candies, like these lifesavers, each one of these has about four grams of carbs in them as well. And you can get them in any grocery store and they take up even less space. Yeah? Thank you for helping. Do you want a banana? Now in, in cases of more severe hypoglycemia, a person probably won't be able to safely drink liquids or eat solid food. If somebody's unconscious or experiencing a seizure, we don't wanna be putting things in their mouth because then it might go down their airway. This could be a really scary moment for family members, especially if you don't know how to help if this ever happens. But there is actually a way that your family members can help to bring your glucose back up, even if your hypoglycemia is so severe that you're unconscious or unresponsive. We have a medication called glucagon, which is actually the same hormone that your body uses to bring glucose levels back up naturally. Giving an unresponsive family member glucagon is usually a very effective way to treat hypoglycemia because it gets the liver to release the stored glucose that it has inside it really quickly and bring the sugar levels back up. Most glucagon formulations are injections that are given just under the skin, but there's also now a nasal spray, which is really easy to use. Since glucagon is not something that a diabetic person would normally give to him or herself, since it's meant to be used when the person is unresponsive, it's really important that all family members know where the glucagon is kept and how to use it in case it suddenly becomes necessary. That's a family conversation that really is worth having. 
If you want to know more about glucagon and the different forms that are available, keep an eye on this channel because I'll be covering the different options and how each one of them is used. So there's your overview on hypoglycemia. It's something that none of us want to experience or have to deal with, but unfortunately it can be a real problem that people with diabetes have to face from time to time. I hope that this helps you have a better understanding of what hypoglycemia is, how we can minimize it, and what you can do if it happens to you. As always, if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that thumbs up button since it really does help the channel. And make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be the first to know when new videos are made available right here on Sugar High. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ready, baby? Are you pooping? I think you're actually pooping right now, aren't you? <laughs>